Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I've got a ticket to LaGuardia from Jacksonville today and you're coming along with me. But when I chose my flight, I had options, two options to be precise. At the very same time of my departure, there was another flight leaving Jacksonville to JFK and it was on the same airline. So why do airlines have two flights leaving to the same city at the same time? Well, first, New York City is always in demand and providing service to two separate airports provides service to two different types of customers. First, there are those whose final destination is New York and you'll want to fly to the closest airport where you need to be. And then there are those who are just connecting in New York. JFK offers many evening international connections to Europe as well as the US, and LaGuardia offers domestic and Canadian destinations. If you watch my channel, you often know why I choose LaGuardia. There are other options too, like JetBlue, which I'm looking at right now from the Delta Sky Club. But I've been a Delta loyalist for many years, and I'm working my way to million miler status, which will happen in less than 100,000 miles from now, so this is just one of the many flights that will help get me there. My flight is talking to the control tower now on its inbound leg from LaGuardia because it's about to land here in Jacksonville. And here it is. I'm going to finish up here at this Delta Sky Club and head out to the gate area. Okay, I'm done with the sky cloud, but I'm gonna head on over to that Embraer. Well, greetings from the air side here at the Jacksonville International Airport. Today, my flight is gonna be operated by Republic Airlines on an Embraer 175, and I'm super excited about flying the Cory arrival to LaGuardia today. Now, as for my seat, I have a seat on the right side of the aircraft. The right side was the only side of the aircraft that was available. I'll be honest with you, I just made this booking. There's a snowstorm that's going to be passing through New York City, and I was actually scheduled to go through LaGuardia tomorrow. However, I don't want to take any risks. There's a chance of cancellation, so I'm flying today. One thing that I considered when changing my flight was the fact that I'll be flying on a regional jet. This regional jet is actually based at LaGuardia Airport. That means that that aircraft is making multiple flights flights back and forth to destinations around LaGuardia Airport. My flight today is an evening flight, so if any flights during the day are delayed, that means that my flight is going to get delayed or ultimately could even get canceled. So I think I made the right decision by going one day in advance. As of now, the winds are calling for an arrival on runway 31 via the park visual approach. Let's see how that goes because I'm on the right side of the aircraft tonight. Hey viewers, pardon the interruption. I really hope you've been enjoying my videos. I strive to put out the best content to make my channel the best aviation channel on YouTube. And do you know that there's a way for you to support my channel? It's called Super Thanks and it's available on every video that I produce. To give Super Thanks, click on the three dots under the video on the bottom right. Then click on Thanks. Use the slider to select the amount you'd like to give, then click Buy and Send. Sending levels start at just $2. Everything that you send from Super Thanks goes right back to this channel to make it the best channel out there. Thanks, everybody. Now, let's get on with today's video. Well, that's the view I get of my Embraer. Not the greatest view, but at least I can see one of the wings. Flight 5839 is my flight to LaGuardia, and at the gate next door, there's another flight to JFK. With basically the same distance to fly, who will arrive first, the LaGuardia or JFK flight? I love an empty jetway. One may think that as the sun sets and the night approaches that the aircraft will both arrive at the same time. After all, they're both traveling to the same city to airports that are just a few miles apart from each other, but in reality, that notion needs to be dismissed by the traveler. Even with the exact same weather conditions at each airport, one can experience delays and the other airport can practice an on-time operation. Here's the flight to JFK visible to me from one of the starboard windows. It's a CRJ 900. This flight boarded at the exact same time my flight boarded. At the gate, I experienced an expeditious boarding process while gate agents competed for audio time over their respective loudspeakers. Clearly all passengers to both airports knew that there was another flight departing to New York City at this time. As we close our forward boarding door, the JFK bound CRJ 900's doors closed simultaneously. Then the captain came on and made this announcement. Should be pushing back here shortly. Uh, we do have a uh, slight delay going into New York. The current weather there, just uh, gusty winds, mostly cloudy skies, temperature is 50 degrees. Uh, with those gusty winds, it uh, affects the arrivals. So right now they have us a 21 time. So just under an hour from now is our wheels up time. 
We're going to push back. Hopefully that gets moved up. Stay optimistic on that one. Once we are airborne, looking at one hour and 39 minutes, going up to 29,000 feet. Rides were a little rough coming uh, coming down. We just came from New York. Uh, we'll do our best to try to find you some smooth air. Now we got two great flight attendants back there, primarily for your safety. Please pay attention to them and follow their instructions. Thanks for joining us, and once again, welcome aboard. Yikes! This captain said that ATC has given us a takeoff time at 21, which is 7.21 p.m. This flight is scheduled to leave the gate at 6.35 p.m. That's about 46 minutes from pushback to takeoff. Nonetheless, we're going to leave the gate on time and push back and taxi and just wait out there wherever the ground controller places us until our takeoff time has come, all with the hope of being allowed to take off earlier. As we push back, the JFK bound flight did the same thing at the same time, and we can see it here. Since I'm so focused on our flight, I don't know if this flight is going to take a delay too. There are also gusty winds at JFK, just like at LaGuardia. After all, the airports are just a few miles apart. Will the JFK flight mimic our flight path on the ground and wait? It's now time for us to taxi to the departure runway, runway 26. The Endeavour air flight to JFK is also going to taxi to the runway. We, however, will be on taxiway Alpha, and the other flight will be on taxiway Bravo. Taxiway Alpha will allow us to act as a staging area where we can hold in the ground until our wheels-up time arrives. At that point, the ground controller can switch us to the tower controller, and we can get takeoff clearance. As we continued on taxiway Alpha, look who passed by us. Yep, JFK will be the winner in today's race. With no delays to JFK, that flight taxied right past us and took off. It's the race to New York and Endeavor's winning. Right now we're expecting to uh, hear back in 30 minutes. I'll we'll probably start moving in 30 minutes in the air, uh, 35 to 40. If anything changes, we'll let you know. In the meantime, we'll get the seatbelt sign off, uh, shut down an engine, save them, save some fuel, and uh, we'll be on our way uh, as soon as we can. Hopefully, I get uh, we get moved up and have some good news for you. Uh, if not, we uh, like I said, 21 after is our wheels up time. From this point, all I could do was just sit and watch other airplanes headed to other airports take off in front of us. We're not moving anywhere, and due to the volume at LaGuardia, some extra space is needed between arrivals, but the pilot came back on the PA system just a few minutes later with some really good news. All right, they just changed our wheels up time to 57 past the hour. So now we have a wheels up time of just 22 minutes past our off time from the gate. ATC saw the traffic in LaGuardia was improving as we were released early and told to monitor the control tower frequency for clearance to enter the runway. So we're definitely behind the JFK flight, which was airborne in just a few minutes after starting its taxi, but we're not as late as we thought we would have been when the pilot made his delay announcement. For now, we just need to wait for landing traffic to land on the runway, then it's ours, and once that aircraft clears the runway, we are cleared for takeoff. We're airborne, and now only slightly delayed to LaGuardia. With the Jacksonville airport being far from the populated areas, one thing that helps our climb is that we can turn right to the north quickly without worrying about noise pollution on the ground. We'll still land behind schedule, but our nearly straight line routing will get us to New York City quickly. I'll skip the in route phase of flight and fast forward to passing by Vineland, New Jersey. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned that we'd be flying on the Cori arrival, and that's the exact arrival procedure that we're flying on now. This is designed for aircraft approaching LaGuardia from the south, and we follow its path all the way toward Brooklyn, New York. 
just past Vineland in the distance is the coastal city of Atlantic City. The lights of its casino hotels makes it very easy to identify from up here. As we continue along and descend, we follow instructions by the New York Approach Controller. Sorry for the reflection on the window, but the flight attendants are doing their safety checks, so they need to have the cabin lighting on to conduct their work. In the distance is the Atlantic Ocean. It's in that airspace that the flight to JFK that we saw take off in Jacksonville descended in. Arrivals from the south to the two airports, LaGuardia and JFK, fly parallel paths. LaGuardia's is over New Jersey, and Kennedy's is over the ocean. While we fly the Cory arrival, JFK arrivals from the south fly what's called the Cameron arrival before they get vectored to the final approach course. Today, we're getting vectored for the Park Visual Runway 31 approach, which takes us straight in from where we are, directly toward LaGuardia Airport. Once a few miles south of the airport, we'll turn right along the LIE and then make a left turn over Flushing Meadows, Corona Park, and swing around to land on runway 31. At the beginning of this video, I said that we'll see how this approach goes since I'm on the right side of the aircraft. Well, the stunning Manhattan and airport views are on the left side of the plane, but for Brooklyn and Queens enthusiasts, this is the side of the plane to sit on. However, with my last minute booking, I can only find a seat where the wing engine partially obstructed my view. There were seats in the very front and back of the wing, however, they were aisle seats, and that is a pure no-go for me. So I have what I consider to be the best available seat on this aircraft. Let's fly the park visual approach to runway 31.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you fly to JFK or LaGuardia, you really don't know which airport will have the delay because there could be so many different factors that could lead to the delay. And despite the airports being in the same city, even within the same borough of New York, the demand for one airport can be significantly different than the demand for the other airport. So it's really hard to tell which airport will get you in sooner. In this example, JFK was victorious, but it could be just the opposite on a different day. If you have a lot of flexibility, specifically last-minute flexibility, you could look at the FAA's website to see where the delays are and make a change from one airport to another. But if there's no window seat available, stay with the window seat that you already have. All right, I am now here on the ground at LaGuardia. Nice approach, but I'm telling you, it is difficult to film when those windows are dirty like that. I tried my best to get the best view, but we'll see. Anyway, we're now here in the sea terminal at LaGuardia. All right, this terminal is looking a lot different than it used to look. All right, well, I'm in the new Terminal C. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I invite you to click on the subscribe button below, hit the bell button, hit the like button, and be assured there'll be more videos like this in the future.